Hey everybody, what's going on? It's uh, Kenneth Brenner again, and uh, today uh, we'll be doing another DCS F16 uh, video. This will be video number two in the DCS uh, Husky Flying Club tutorial series. Again, um, I'm using Track IR, so um, at this time you should probably find your zoom button that you've probably been acquainted with now on VR. Um, so it'll be more of like a, a, a jumpy little, a jumpy zoom more than like the smooth zoom I have, but yeah. So for today's video, we're going to be covering some of the weapon systems, and let's go ahead and talk about some of the weapon systems on the uh, F-16. So we're going to go over to our radio menu, our ground crew, and we're going to get some rearm and get some refuel here. I'll probably bump up that field. This thing loves to suck ass. In order to stay everyone longer, we're going to add that tank right on the center line. We're going to add that lightning to our right cheek. Pylons 3, 4, 6, and 7 carry smart munitions. Basically, those are bombs and air-to-ground weapons that interlay with the targeting pod. So you won't find any bombs on uh, stations 1, 2, 8, or 9. On stations 4 and 6, we won't be carrying any smart munitions today. We're going to be carrying a dumb bomb to illustrate how to use um, the CCIP feature, which is something that will be pretty basic and helpful for you guys. And on station uh, stations 3 and uh, 7, we're going to be carrying a Maverick. My preference is carrying Deltas. On station 7, you can also carry a harm, and we'll go ahead and show you what that is later. But yeah, basically for your main ground attack layout, you're going to want to have a couple bombs, a couple Mavericks, and you're going to want to have some uh, armor piercing. Um, either you can have a high explosive, you can either have your Safi, um, basically high explosive armor piercing rounds, or you can have your armor piercing rounds. Uh, Safi works pretty good for me, so I'm going to keep it there. Uh, flare chaff 60-60, and that should be good. All right. While we wait for that to go up, we're going to go ahead and jump into... Oh, it's going to pause. But we're going to go and do some of our HOTAS commands. Um, HOTAS, hands-on throttle stick, are super important in DCS, especially for these fully integrated modules. So we're going to cover some of the basics. The basics are the radar cursor, target management switch, which is our TMS, TMS, our DMS, our countermeasure switch, those are basically the ones that you're going to watch out for, and that's basically everything that inlays with your targeting pod as well as your air-to-air -air ammunition. So make sure you have pretty much, you go down to here, you go to the hotel section, you should have pretty much everything in there bound that you can. A lot of the stuff is repeat, so basically you don't need to have all the dogfight stuff bound, you just need to find the one that works for you. So I like the dogfight center one. Basically what you want to do is you want to set up your hotel for how you work. So we're going to go ahead and sit out here and let them load on the munitions and we're going to walk through some of our systems. So, like I said, we're going to go ahead and do the flow. Make sure everything should be already on my standby, but we're going to go ahead and tweak some of our radios. Make sure our threat warning system is on. We have our landing light to taxi and we're going to be hoeing... Basically, I didn't explain this in the last video, but cat one is you're really light. Cat three, you're really heavy. So if you're carrying bombs or munitions or fuel tanks, you're going to probably want to be in cat three. Basically, that'll stop you from ripping your wings off. Uh, we're gonna go into our storage management system. We're gonna see what we have. Got that 300 gallon tank. Got that one Mark 82, one Mark 82. This smart rack, the L88A, which is with a 65 Delta, a 65 Delta. And then we have our missiles on the outside, two N120Cs. Go back to the HSD. So, we just got the rearming complete. As you can see, we are a good looking airplane. So let's go ahead and taxi. Make sure that nose wall steering is on. So this video was requested by um, one of the cats just Looking to do more of the fun stuff of the X-16, which is dogfighting, um, which I'll cover in a later video, um, in the next video actually. And this is more of an air to ground um, kind of look, as well as maybe doing a little bit of the communications he said was bugging him on the inside. So the uh, comms on the F-16 are pretty easy. So you basically need to turn your radios on. So if you see 305.000, your comms are good. The way you change your, basically your ultra high frequency radio, which is the one that you're gonna be always using, is using your DED page. You're gonna go to Com, so you read this one right here. COM1 is the, your, your UHF radio and COM2 is your VHF radio. COM2 is used for your, your instrument lineup sequencing and your COM1 is used for communication. So you're gonna go COM1. You go, hey, I'm on 305, but hey, what if I wanna go to 25100, enter. If this is the preset down here, but now we are on UHF 251. And that's kind of how you use the comms there. So let's go ahead and back to 305 again, because I'm pretty sure that's what Kobolody is. A little bit more about the DED page. We have steer point one selected. I, what if I want steer point, let's say three. So I can use the rocker switch or I can use my increment switch. Steer point three will be our target field over here. All right, with that set, let's go ahead and turn on our Chemex. And let's go ahead and get lined up for runway two five here. Cobody traffic, Viper zero one, taking runway two five for a straight out departure. Cobody traffic. Get in the practice of using those comms. 
Again, nose wheel steering is off. Keep rudder center down the runway. And we're going to go ahead and start applying back pressure on the stick here. 130. Good, nice pitch up. Level it out. Off it. A little bit hang in, hang heavy on the left side here. And we are airborne. Gear check safe. Inner marker. And let's get out of burner and let's go ahead and climb up here. Leave it in the middle detent. And we're going to go ahead and swing up here. So. If you're going to go ahead and check your HSD, you're like, hey, you're turning away from waypoint 3. You're right. Waypoint 3 is right over my shoulder there, that X airport. You can kind of see it. I'm trying to point it with my head. It's kind of hard. But that's where we're headed. But basically what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do my max climb at mill power to get up there. As you can see, I'm not moving my throttle, but my fuel flow is going down. What you're Basically, something that's really great about jet engines is you'll burn less fuel at altitude. So all you have to do is you can leave a power setting in. And you'll burn less fuel as long as you climb. As long as if you stop climbing, your fuel flow will go back up as you can see. So make sure you keep climbing. So now that we're up, let's go ahead and turn on our laser, master arm, and we're gonna go to air ground mode. Make sure our 65 deltas are on, and they're gonna be in visual mode right now. On a F16, you're gonna have these OSB buttons. Basically, in order to get to the main menu, so for example, we're in the FCR, we're gonna go ahead and click that. We're like, hey, I want the TGP. And now you have it. So you'll see this thing recurring called not soy. Basically what that means is that panel is not your center of interest and you should probably make it your center of interest. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna do DMS down. If you do DMS down multiple times, it'll swap the what, whichever one of these MFDs is soy, but you can you can tell this one's soy by the box on the outside and it'll no longer say not soy. Do you wanna make your HUD soy? DMS up, HUD soy indicated by the asterisk. So let's go ahead and run with the CCIP attack uh, with our first things here. As you can see, we're gonna have a little bit of information. We're gonna have our, again, max, Min, radius drop. We're gonna have what we're, our mode, so we're gonna be attacking at CCIP. And down here in the SMS page, we're gonna see what we're gonna have. We have a single bomb, it is ready. It is a nose tail fused, and there's just a ripple of one, and so basically we're just dropping a single bomb. We have two on there, we have two on the jet though. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that up to my BTR, and we're gonna go ahead and descend. Basically put your velocity vector just over your target. We're gonna 500 knot attack. Good, 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 pickle. One off. So that, that bomb did come off the jet. Now let's go see the, the impact of it. Boom! Pull that BTR straight to hell. And now we're gonna reposition for an engagement. So we got Brennan out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe drop some countermeasures to get out of the area. And as you drop it, it'll say chaff flare. This time I'll be attacking a bunker on the south side of the airport. So again, remember. We want to put our velocity vector just above the target, and we want to pull that pipper icon right up to it, and then pull the weapon release button to pickle the weapon. In that order. This is the most basic of air to ground attacks, but as you can see, it does a lot of damage when you really get your practice down with it. And we're rolling on the attack now. Lining up that runway really helps us out. Our Maverick's really interested in that one hill over there. I'm gonna need to figure out what it's doing later. <laughs> All right, so again, you're gonna go ahead about a 20 to 30 degree dive angle. You're only in cap three, so you, you can't pull too many Gs out of the turn. So you really need me to manage your dive angle. So I'm gonna dive here about just above 20, so maybe 18, and I'm gonna watch my speed. I'm gonna keep about 500 knots, and that gives me the best check chance for attack. Again, I'm, target, I'm attacking this bunker right here. So put your bomb fall line right over it. Maintain that velocity vector into the trees, aim there. And you can see your pipper creep up. Put that pipper right over that bunker. Pickle, one's off. Oof, just missed. So as you can see, the CCIP, though easy, can be difficult at times. So next, I'm gonna show you a precision engagement using our Mavericks. So, I have the Maverick caged to my velocity vector. Now that we have dropped those bombs, I'm gonna go to Cat 1. I'm gonna get the full performance out of my jet. We can go ahead and check what we have in our external center. And we're out of gas in our external center, which means if we wanted to, we could punch it. Let's go ahead and position our jet back around for an attack on the runway. So what, what I'm gonna be using here is my expand FOV button, my radar cursor button, and 
my velocity vector and my jet. So in visual mode, the Maverick is caged to my velocity vector. So if I want to kill that one bunker that was so troublesome, all I'm going to do is make sure my Maverick is soy, what I want it to be. Position over here, expand, 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 team mess up, team mess up to engage lock and rifle. And one away. And let's go ahead and watch it on the uh, impact. So that Maverick is honed in on that bunker right there. Shack that bunker. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Cadet Brainer, and for the second part of this uh, F-16 uh, systems video, we're going to be uh, conducting a fighter sweep over the Persian Gulf map with my wingman out there. Um, as you can see, I have uh, two A-120s and four A-9Xs on the side. And basically the point of this mission right here is to illustrate how we will do BVR fighting. We'll be covering dog fighting in a later video. Basically the F-16 is built to fight air-to-air -air targets. So as you can see, in terms of its uh, air-to-ground capabilities, it's grown. Um, however, DCS hasn't fully implemented all of the F-16's air-to-ground capabilities. Uh, currently the targeting pod is still a bit buggy and it's um, generally unreliable to deliver laser guided weapons. Until they fix that, we'll be mainly focusing on the F-16's ability to wage aerial combat. And in order to do that, we're going to talk about some systems. The first system is the file control radar. It is a radar in my nose that looks out to about 80 miles reliably and it'll tell me the floor of its cone. So that negative one, that's negative 1,000 feet in the ground up to 22,000 feet. So at that point in space, about 40 miles out, it'll see anything from the floor to 22,000 feet. It shows me it in a top-down picture. So if I'm right where it says RDY and you go 30 degrees right, 30 degrees left, and any anywhere inside this cone will appear on that radar. So basically you wanna keep them in this, imagine a little triangle here, and this is how the, the top-down view of them out in front of you. On the right, you have the SA page. You can kind of see it. We have some yellow lines that indicate enemy SAM sites or friendly SAM sites. Basically, stay out of the yellow stuff. Up here, we have our RWR, something that you'll use when you're, especially when you're in a turning fight. The RWR will tell you when a friendly, an E3, is locking you or sees you, or when a MiG-29, an enemy, sees you. So basically, that's telling me that my friendlies are behind me. Wave your E3 back there, and the enemy's in front of me. For this, you'll need a few hotel fans. So you're gonna need TMS up, TMS down, TMS right, up and release, guns, your display management down, up, and your dogfight switch. So let's continue. Turn your symbology up, make sure your RWR and countermeasures are set, your master armor's on, make sure that air to air mode's on. Oops, sorry, air to air mode, please. Make sure your 9 axes are on board so you can look around and slew them. And we select those two aim 120s. You're gonna wanna make sure that your Radar is in TWS, track will scan, and there's our enemies. So currently the uh, bandits are flying too close together to maintain a lock, so I'm gonna go ahead and go one. Two. I can't gain a track file on the second one. There's one. And there we go. I can cycle between the two targets. I think I should shoot at this one first, so I'm gonna go ahead and climb up. So I have the, currently have the guy in the front locked. This is a MiG-29. I'm going to climb up to my angels. I'm going to have a good shoot. I'm going to shoot when he's about mm, 60 miles away. And I'm going to crank. Now, I'm going to crank to his buddy. And I'm going to shoot his buddy too. So, like I said, switch to the targets. So, I'm looking. I have one pit bull. Time to impact. And now I have both pit bull. Which means I should probably be defending. Crank to the left and defend. Once once they go from A to T, you are good. That means they are active. So there's one hit. And there's the second one destroyed. And that's kind of how you use TMS. TMS can be really buggy. You're going to want to use this expand feature. So find that expand FOV button. It'll really help them break them up. So now what we should be doing is we should be going back. And we should be checking our HST, making sure that we got them all. Still says one might have slipped through, so we should probably be maneuvering to check that out. See if that's still a ghost bug. Oh, and it was a ghost bug. I was in it. Splash one, and splash two in the mountains over there. 
And yeah, so that's pretty much how you use the uh, TW TWS system on the F-16. Make sure to look up some videos on it. Basically, remember, TMS right, switch between the target, TMS up, locks the target, TMS down, unlocks the target. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know with the basics, uh, inner, basic weapon systems for the F-16. Definitely master those before um, um, anything else. Really, the, that's always a great backup. So if the laser guided bomb ain't working, um, a, a, a dub bomb will do just as good. You just need to, might need to fly a little bit better and get in the target area differently, but um, end of the day, uh, it does the same thing, blows it up. So make sure you're working on all those weapons. There's a lot of good weapon systems. Um, if you want more of a ground attack focused aircraft, look into the A-10. And um, actually, I'll be doing some A-10 videos coming up here pretty soon too. So if you have any questions, always give me, a, just let me know if you want to see something like, hey, I, I don't know about this, can you help me out with this? And uh, make sure that you're practicing everything I'm saying in that in that simulator. And uh, it'll really give you a great insight to what um, S-16 and A-10 pilots do on a daily basis. So yeah, uh, that'll be it, guys. So uh, have you fine.